Hey, y'all. Uh, I wanted to jump on today because a fellow EMSer over on Instagram, Medic Foam, posted a quick um, uh, tips and, and uh, uh, findings for digoxin toxicity. And I thought it's important because throughout my EMS life, I have often heard this a lot, right? Dig poisoning, dig toxicity, and people say it and they say it off the cuff like they know what it is. And a lot of times I think they really don't know what it is and they're just saying it because the patient might be on that type of a medication and they're thinking that's what it is. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today because when patients get prescribed a get prescribed digoxin, Right, and most of the times because of heart failure, AFib, a flutter, and sometimes maybe a history of cardi uh, cardiogenic shock, something like that. So digoxin, when you think about it, <clears throat> it increases that squeeze. Right, it's a positive uh, inotrope, okay, and it's also a negative chronotrope, which means it slows down the ventricular rate for the patient as well. So when the patient is toxic from digoxin, one of the Triggers you might see with that is something uh, called hypokalemia. So when you see a patient that you might be thinking they're having an issue because they're on digoxin, something like that, look at all the medications that they're taking that may, may trigger that, right? Something that may affect the potassium, like diuretics. So if you see patients that are on diuretics, start thinking that maybe there is some sort of digoxin toxicity going on, and that might be what's happening, right? So you might see something, something called a green, uh, a yellow green halo, blurred vision, right? Um, dizziness is common, abdominal discomfort, nausea, vomiting. Um, one thing I will say, when you think about these signs and symptoms, it's pretty broad, right? A lot of people get dizzy. A lot of people have abdominal pain. A lot of people can nausea, vomiting when you get cold. They're their houses. So you have to put all of this stuff together and think about all of the symptoms and signs and patient history, like I said, diuretics, the medications, how they've been taking it, maybe taking too much, maybe taking too little, one or the other, putting all this together and then thinking about the findings that I'm mentioning here, right? Even EKG find, your EKG find, your paramedic, you would put on the EKG. You might see a slower ventricular uh, response going on, a second or third degree AV block, maybe throwing some PVCs, maybe even ventricular tachycardia. So all of these types of things that you want to kind of look at and look at the whole picture during your patient assessment. Now, I want to end it here, but one thing I want to talk about is a quick test tip. Because like I said in the beginning, right, you hear this a lot, digoxin toxicity, oh, the patient's on day, the patient's on day, uh, you know, shut up. You don't, first of all, let's think about, like I said, the entire patient assessment. Just because a patient's on digoxin doesn't mean that they automatically have a toxicity to it, and that's what's going on if they have a second-degree block or a third-degree block, right? Look at the entire picture. When it comes to testing, when the question is trying to lead you or to get you to understand that the patient is having a digoxin toxicity event happening, they're going to try to tell, give you the clues, right? They're going to say second-degree block, maybe a third-degree block. They're going to say dizziness. But the one thing to keep an eye out is when they say things like yellow-green halo, right, or the blurred vision. Think about that as your key element when you're taking an exam that might be the thing that pushed you over the top so that you know that they're looking for you to rule out that digoxin toxicity. Guys, I hope this really helps you. Like I said, my buddy over on Instagram, Medic Foam, he puts a lot of great stuff like this out. You can actually read it with some graphics. Um, you can go ahead and either watch this video again, go there, and look at some key points too. If you're on Instagram, please go ahead and go ahead and follow him. I think he has some great content um, by doing that. And don't forget, guys, you want some more great foam med stuff, go to ems2022.com. Sign up for a free membership as an EMS SEO responder. It's 100% free. There's hours of content there. There's downloads. I actually just, just uploaded two new PDFs on a complete anatomy, physiology, and pathophysiology of the heart, and a whole thing about going over the components of an EKG. 
What I like about these two PDFs that I just put up there is the fact that they are nice and short. One, I think, is eight pages. One's about maybe 16 pages, something like that. But it's nice and short and a great way for you to go ahead and review that, that content and to study and brush up. And, of course, if you don't remember it and it doesn't make sense to you, that's when you got to crack open that textbook and read into it and go ahead and solidify that content and that topic in your brain. So go check that out, ems2022.com. Guys, do me a favor. Please like this video if you find it at all helpful. It'll help keep it in the feed over on the Instagrams and the YouTubes and the, and the uh, Facebooks and all that good stuff. It'll keep it in there for me. Keep it up a little higher. So go ahead and like it for me. Share it with people you might think might benefit from it. I'm going to end it there. Quick five-minute video today, just giving you a quick little overview on the jocks and toxicity and some of the key findings that will help you, not just with your patient care, but when you get in front, sitting in front of that exam, some of the key signs and symptoms that you can look for when a patient might be presenting with that. Because when you know signs and symptoms, guys, it is going to make your exam-taking process that much easier. All right, guys, that's it. As always, I am Jim Hoffman from EMS SEO.